On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong took his legendary Small Step for Man, which turned us into a species that travels to foreign celestial bodies. What many people don't know, however, is that the groundbreaking Apollo 11 mission was only the beginning of a much bigger story. Between 1969 and 1972, NASA managed to send 10 more astronauts to the moon at breakneck speed. Each manned moon landing wrote its own adventure, sometimes ending in resounding triumphs and sometimes narrowly avoiding deadly disasters. We're talking about astronauts flying through lightning, cameras being fried by the sun, and researchers literally making the moon shake. Today, we'll show you what really happened after arms already landed in a small crater on the moon in 1967. This was also where the crew was to land in order to bring some probe parts back to Earth, but even the launch turned into a nightmare. When the Saturn V rolled onto the launch pad on November 14, 1969, the sky was not bright blue, but filled with rain, thunder, and lightning. Ideal launch conditions look quite different, but NASA nevertheless decided to proceed with the mission as planned. On the one hand, U.S. President Nixon was there in person to watch the launch, and on the other hand, those responsible knew that if they didn't fly now, they would have to wait months for the next launch window. So the countdown began, and just 36 after launch, lightning struck the ascending rocket. All of the capsule's electronics failed, warning lights flashed across all the displays, and then the second lightning strike followed. Panic spread through the command capsule, but the spacecraft continued to race forward without a functioning power supply or navigation system. Shortly thereafter, Mission Control, the ground station monitoring the flight, also lost contact with the astronauts. and saved Apollo 12. How NASA Made the Moon Tremble In the aftermath, NASA vowed never to take off during a thunderstorm again. And three days after the lightning start, Conrad and Bean reached the surface of the moon. They managed to make a precise landing, touching down only about 160 meters away from Surveyor 3. In addition, the mission also had a real first in store for the rest of Earth's inhabitants. It was the first time that color images were transmitted directly from the moon. However, the spectacle lasted only a few minutes. While Alan Bean was aligning the camera, it briefly pointed toward the sun, and the glaring light burned out the sensitive image tube. Since the moon has no atmosphere to dim the sunlight, every ray hits the lens unimpeded, and from then on, the world saw nothing. But despite all the image failures and flashes, the mission
experiment is still used today to support the hollow moon theory. From a purely conservative scientific point of view, however, the results did not prove that the moon is an artificially created space station with a hollow interior. Instead, the long vibrations showed that our satellite consists of dry, brittle layers of rock that transmit vibrations particularly well. oxygen tank in the service module at the rear of the spacecraft suddenly exploded. This module was responsible for power supply, water, oxygen, and engine control, and in one fell swoop almost all essential systems had failed. The entire mission was hanging in the balance, and Jack Swigert radioed a sentence that remains unforgettable to this day. Houston, we have a problem. Mission control responded immediately. Engineers, flight controllers, and specialists worked around the clock. return flight to Earth, and mind you, only with the help of backup systems. About four days after the oxygen tank explosion, the unimaginable finally happened, and the three astronauts landed safely in the South Pacific, near the Samoa Islands, on April 17, 1970. The capsule was recovered by the U.S. aircraft carrier, and the crew emerged unharmed. Apollo 14, Alan Shepard's return to space. Apollo 13 had far-reaching consequences. Technically and organizationally, the risks, NASA was determined not to abandon the Apollo program. Just one year later, Apollo 14 was set to return to the moon and restore confidence in manned space flight. Alongside Stuart Rusa and Edgar Mitchell, Alan Shepard also took part in the mission. At 47, he was not only the oldest Apollo astronaut ever, but also the first American in space. After his pioneering flight on May 5, 1961, the NASA veteran was supposed to lead Apollo 14. samples, installed equipment, and returned safely to Earth on February 9, 1971, together with Rusa. When the last man left the moon. On December 1972, NASA had completed three more lunar landing missions, each longer, more ambitious, and more technologically advanced than the previous ones. 
Apollo 15 marked a decisive change. David Scott and James Irwin were now able to stay on the lunar surface for a full three days. By comparison, the Apollo 11 astronauts had left the celestial body after only about 21 hours. In addition, Apollo 15 was equipped with the innovative Lunar Rover, a battery-powered vehicle that allowed the crew to explore mountains, valleys, and ancient volcanic structures. During their mission, the men also discovered the famous Genesis Rock, a rock approximately 4 billion years old that is considered a fragment of the original lunar crust. The astronauts also demonstrated Galileo. Eugene Cernan, Harrison Schmidt became the first professional geologist to set foot on the moon. Together, the two spent 75 hours on the surface, covered more than 36 kilometers with the rover, and secured over 110 kilograms of rock and soil samples. Particularly spectacular was the discovery of orange-colored soil, and when Schmidt took a closer look, it turned out to be tiny beads of volcanic glass. At around 3.6 billion years old, these finds provided crucial clues about the moon's volcanic past and made Apollo 17 one of the most scientifically valuable missions ever. On December 14th, the crew set off on their return journey to Earth. And when Eugene Cernan left the lunar surface, he said goodbye with the following words. We leave the moon as we came, and, God willing, we will return one day with peace and hope for all mankind. However, that day has not yet come, because no one has set foot on the moon since then. But if you click on the subscribe button now, you'll never miss a new video from us again. So please join our community to stay up to date from now on. See you soon.